This is a Fox Sports presentation. Week 15 in the NFL, and it's coming down to the wire. Three games to play, one place to be. It's the NFL on Fox. Down in Tampa, the Battle of the Bays will decide the Central. The past two weeks, Green Bay's exercised personal demons. Now, the Packers want to continue to... One, two, three, five. The Buck Boys have their own equation for winning. The concentration, preparation equals execution. The Giants take it to Philly for a pivotal NFC East clash. Lately, the G-Men haven't been uh, He-Men. We gotta take it to the next level! Meanwhile, the Eagles have only one wish for the holidays. We <laughs> your wish is my command. Bobby Hoying is your QB man. Minnesota is melting as the Vikes square off with the Niners. Can Randall rekindle the Purple People's offensive passion? San Francisco hopes to shake off its KC hang hangover. Who are we? Hey, you're the Niners, and now you're looking for respect. The Skins march to the desert to take on the Cardinals. No Gus, no glory. Norv hopes Haas can lead the Skins to a playoff bonanza, little buddy. But all the Zona D likes to do is... One, two, three! It's St. Louis and the Saints down on the Bayou. The Rams snap their eight-game slide, while New Orleans has been winning ugly. Atlanta continues its West Coast road trip in San Diego. For the Falcons, Chandler has a hot hand, while the Chargers' Metcalf would love to add to his record rate of return. Now, live from our Hollywood studios, four guys who already qualify for the postseason on charm and good looks alone. <laughs> it's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Folks, these are good times down in Tampa. Take a look at the traffic jam an hour and a half before the start of game time today as some 70,000 plus will be jammed inside of Houlihan Stadium for the biggest game since their 79 championship game. Packer fans are there as well, 15,000 strong for that Tampa Bay Green Bay game. Other big early game today, New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles as we welcome you back to the Fox Television Center here in Studio 7 for Fox NFL Sunday. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Happy to have you alongside with us once again. My guys, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, Terry Bradshaw. What's the matter? My hair all right. Your hair looks perfect. <laughs> matter of fact, but talking about not being all right, Big Boy is down today. Villanova happened, lost. Man? Notre Dame got you guys, huh? <laughs> no. Huh? Notre was, Dame took was, care of you? It was Youngstown State. Who? And, and we don't like to make excuses, but the team got food poisoning. Before. Food poisoning? That's Young the only thing I can come up with. one double A coach of the year, one one double A player of the year. It's oh, been yeah, a good right. year for me. But you know, I was a little concerned about you, Blonde Me? Bomber. Yeah, are you feeling all right? What, what, what is this medicine cabinet? I got my you? pills with me today. What's wrong with you? I'm oral I'm surgery. I'm case, oral surgery. If says anything that's at all odd. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, now, the thing is, the thing is, ter God, God, Terry has had upper and lower surgery. Uh, I'm in a lot of pain right now. I got a lot of love. I can for you, baby. That stuff out for you. Got a lot of old. <laughs> you'd, you'd like to do that, you know? No, I wouldn't. Yes. Watch anyway, how you talk to me. Don't might point choke your you. finger at me. I'll oh, you. It might choke him. Oh, look at that. Oh, anyway, oh, no. hey, we'll move on with that in mind. All right, folks, let's set the playoff picture for you. Here's a look at what's at stake in Week 15. Green Bay, which has already sewn up a playoff spot, gets a first round bye with a win over Tampa Bay today. Three teams get in with the victory. The Bucks would make it for the first time since 82. Jacksonville will be in for the second year in a row. And finally, Kansas City. Now, two other teams, Pittsburgh and Minnesota, are in with the win and some help. Now, let's set the conferences for you. In the AFC East, New England has the tiebreaker. But keep in mind, the Patriots travel to Miami the last week of the season. Pittsburgh's better division record gives them the lead in the Central over Jacksonville. And of course, Denver leads the West. Now the wild card race finds Kansas City at the top, followed by Jacksonville, Miami, and the Jets. Now, even though the Jets are on the outside looking in, if they win the rest of their games, they will make the playoffs because of that New England-Miami game. In the NFC, the Giants lead the East, but finish up with three division opponents beginning today with the Eagles. The Packers can lock up the Central, and San Francisco, of course, has already clinched a first-round bye. The NFC wildcard race should literally end up being just that, pretty wild. Right now, Tampa Bay is in good shape. Minnesota, in the second spot, is reeling. That's because they've lost three straight. 
traveled to San Francisco today and also have lost their starting quarterback, Brad Johnson, for the year. Ouch, indeed. And all of a sudden, Detroit is in the third slot. But Philadelphia, Washington, Dallas, and Carolina are all still very much alive. Now, quiz time. Let me come to you guys. Let's be specific. Who do you like coming out of the AFC first, Ronnie, and then the NFC? Well, I like Jacksonville. I, I like Mark Burnell, the quarterback there uh, in the East. I like Miami. I think Miami and Jimmy Johnson's going to get the job done. On the West, I like Kansas City. I like Denver. But Marty Schottenheimer, he's got a curse there. I think that they're going to get rid of that curse, and I think Marty Schottenheimer's going to get the job Quickly, done. Quickly, NFC then. NFC. You know where I'm going to go, baby. Don't, don't My heart's in San Francisco. Don't. I'm going to stay Your with San Francisco. Your heart's in New York. No, it's, it's in San Kansas Francisco. City. But I also like, the, I like Green Bay, and I like Tampa Bay. I'll tell you, in, in the AFC, I like Kansas City in a tiebreaker versus Denver. They get Gerback back. He practiced this week. AFC Central, I like Jacksonville. I like Pittsburgh as a wild card. AFC East, Miami wins the division crown. New England in a wild card. NFC West, Frisco wins the title. And, you know, it's funny, at 11-2, and two, it's a statement game for them today at 11-2. and two. <laughs> NFC Central, Green Bay wins. Tampa Bay, Minnesota. And we're going to do the NFC East a little bit later. But like the Milwaukee Brewers, we're going to switch Minnesota over to the <laughs> NFC East. And they're winning it as a write-in. <laughs> <laughs> good move, good move. I, I, I think the Jets will take the NFC, the AFC East. I'm going to go with, uh, in the, I'm going to go with Jacksonville and the AFC Central, Ooh. Denver in the West, Kansas City will be a wild card, Pittsburgh will be a wild card. Uh, over on the East side, it's a toss up, just whoever can get in there. And then the and the NFC, that's already locked up with with the 49ers. Central is going to be Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay wins this. Tampa, Tampa, Tampa Bay wins yeah. today, closes it out the year, and Tampa Bay ends up winning the Central. What a stretch. Where, where, where did you go this week to do a story? Uh, I've been all over the country Tampa promoting Bay, clocks. Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay is where he went. Unbelievable. Uh, where will I be next week? <laughs> Tampa Bay more than <laughs> I, I just, If not New Orleans. All right, folks, now that you're not going anywhere for a while, it's time for our Snickers Fox Watch. And we begin with a gem as the Packers and Buccaneers battle for supremacy in the NFC Central. And calling that game today will be our own Dick Stockton. Good afternoon, Dick. And good afternoon to you, JB, and I think Terry brought the cold weather, and that's a story here. Everyone anticipated the temperatures to be in the 80s. It is 50 degrees, clear and sunny. Even the Green Bay Packers were anticipating the heat because they came a day earlier than normal, but they are bundled up, and the temperature is going to be in the 50s today without question. And no doubt about it, it is a happening here in Tampa. When was the last time they had that? This game was sold out as early as last August. And you can credit a lot of the fans from Packerland. The Cheeseheads and the Broadheads, maybe 30,000 worth, will be here today. And we might see the largest crowd ever at Tampa Stadium to see the Buccaneers play. No major injuries as far as the Pack is concerned. But as far as Tampa Bay is concerned, well, the offensive line shuffled again. Jim Pine injured last week against the Giants. Out, George Diaz moves from right guard to left guard. And rookie Frank Middleton will start in right guard. Amazingly enough, this is the first time the Packers and Bucks have ever played this late in the season when they both have had winning records. Right now, let's send you to Philadelphia and Joe Buck. All right, Dick, thank you very much. It is a cold day here in Philadelphia for a hot matchup in the NFC East. These two teams banging heads today and a matchup of two young quarterbacks. For the New York Giants, there was no hotter quarterback in the NFL than Danny Cannell for the five weeks that he helped his team get to the top of the division. But he's been suspect the last couple of weeks, prompting his head coach Jim Fossil to say, if he is the reason why our offense is not productive, we'll make a change, in which case we'll see Dave Brown a quarterback, but do not look for a quick hook for Danny Cannell. For the Philadelphia Eagles, this has become Bobby Hoying's town, and why not? First three weeks as a starter, this young man has put up bigger numbers than any quarterback in Philadelphia Eagles history, and he is well aware of the situation the Eagles are in. Uh, it feels good, but it, really, you know, you look at the situation, our situation hasn't changed because three weeks ago we needed a win every week to, uh, you know, just to have a chance to get in the playoffs, and it's still the same thing. Two teams fighting for the playoffs in 1997, two teams with second-year quarterbacks. That's the story in Philadelphia. Let's go to New Orleans and Kenny Albert. Thank you very much, Joe. The Saints host the Rams, both teams coming off road victories last week. For St. Louis, defensive coordinator Bud Carson, who has never missed a game in his 23-year NFL career, is not here. Underwent gallbladder surgery on Thursday, but not before he left the hospital on Wednesday to help design the nickel defense. For the Saints, Billy Joe Holbert, a winner last week, 
gets another start at quarterback, and he will be without Alvin Harper, claimed on waivers from Washington Tuesday. Harper injured his ankle on Thursday. JB, back to you in Hollywood. All right, Kenny, doubleheader Sunday here on Fox. Coming up later this afternoon, you'll see one of these three games. Minnesota at San Francisco, Washington must-win situation against the Cardinals, and Atlanta at San Diego. That for Eastern right here on Fox. Let's come back in and talk about that Giants-Philadelphia contest, and we heard the wind blowing pretty heavily there, pretty strongly in Philadelphia. But, Terry, a lot of public talk about uh, Danny Cannell being on a short leash because the Giants have not scored very well. Is that good for a young quarterback psyche? No, I, I think that's a terrible thing. I think it's a terrible. You don't, call, you don't go out and say you're going to give your quarterback a quick hook. Number one, he's going to be looking over his shoulder. It tightens him up. And this is an offense that is playing very tight. Go back to their earlier uh, season victory, 31-17. to Imaginative offense, creative, all over the field. Where is this offense going? Only three touchdowns scored in their last four games. It's a football team that only had converted one of 13 first downs on third downs last week traveling on the road to a house that they do not play well in against a team that right now is the hottest thing in the NFC East is a problem for the Giants I really think Fossil made a big mistake when he said he'll give a quick hook that puts too much pressure on young Cannell I think we put too much into the young quarterback psyche today I mean everyone's worried about how the quarterback feels quarterback should deliver for the money he makes wouldn't you say He's a puppy. And no one else on the football field were that worried about it. You know, it comes down to this. New York Giants have become more, as you pointed out, have become more and more conservative and more reliant on that outstanding defense. That defense let them down a little bit last week. The difference in these two teams right now is you say, if you stop the run, if you look at these two teams, stop the run, that's the team that wins. But this team, Philadelphia Eagles, with Hoying in the game, he's spreading the ball around. The tight end, yes, the tight end has emerged as an integral part of the Philadelphia offense. Now. That's right. I talked to John Gruden, and John Gruden said, you know what? Everybody's talking about Brett Favre, Montana, comparing Hoying. He says, worry about Ken Graham and the other alumni, Tom Zach. They should worry about those guys. He needs to play up to that level right now. He shouldn't worry about trying to be a Brett Favre. He shouldn't worry about being Montana. Play within the, play within the scheme of the Philadelphia def offense, and he'll be fine. Give him mm -hmm. 42 points, and David Patton, a rookie, a rookie wide receiver out of Western Carolina, will start for the Giants at wide receiver, hoping to get some air game going today. Your point's well taken, Howie, but if the coach is worried about the quarterback psyche, then I guess there should be some concern, though, right? Yeah, everybody needs to be a shrink today. That's <laughs> I hear you. Hey, folks, we will talk a bit more about the <laughs> NFC uh, side East the bed you wake in up greater on. detail in just a bit. Side. Hey, folks, here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. All-pro linebacker Greg Greg Lloyd, who's been hospitalized the last 10 days with a staph infection, remains on crutches, and the Steelers fear he may miss the final three regular season games. At last week's NFL labor negotiation meetings, the Seattle Seahawks were not represented. The first public sign that organizational changes will be made by new owner Paul Allen. And due to their disappointing 4-9 and nine record, wholesale changes will be made by the Oakland Raiders. 10 to 20 players may be released, and although Al Davis has not made a final decision on head coach Joe Bugle, several coaches will most likely be terminated at season's end. All right, folks, it's a big day here on Fox, and we've just gotten started. Here's a look at what else is on tap for today's show. Hi, I'm Tony Dungy, coming up on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. A little gusto in you out of here. I don't have much gusto. Now. That, that was pretty style. good, actually. I thought, he, I thought he was going to hyperventilate, to be honest with you. The Bucks in a December buddy game against the Pack. This ain't the old Bucks, dude. This is the new Bucks, dude. Well, for the first time since 82, Tampa Bay looks to return to the playoffs. And the Bucks balance sheet says a win today, and they're in. Terry previews today's big battle of the Bay. Then, the 49ers were cruising along, but then came the Kansas City Massacre. So where do they go from here? Pam Oliver checks in on the Niners and the questions that abound in the Bay Area. And it was once the league's dominant division, producing seven of the last 11 Super Bowl champs. But times have changed for the NFC East. We'll focus in on the perplexing playoff picture. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Snickers. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? By Porsche, who wish to remind you there is no substitute. 
by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call Collect today. And by Foot Locker. Nobody gets you closer to the game than Foot Locker, where it all begins. Time now for the Porsche quarterback report. TB, who's your guy today? Well, my guy's going to be Chris Chandler. I'd like to go with George, but KC and not came out. Elway, Steelers, pass defense. You know, Elway might be the guy right here. I might, you know, I'm going to go with Elway. John Elway today. How about that? So that's Where's your Dilford at? Where did, why did they take Dilford off? What? He's my new guy. What's your answer? I, I'm, I'm going to go with Favre. <laughs> <laughs> I'll back with more after this. <laughs>